Hello and welcome to the Met Office 10 day trend. We've had some hot weather in places recently and things are about to turn even hotter for the start of next week. But before that happens, it's actually turned cooler across many parts of the UK at the time of recording. You can see the cooler colours there, especially across northern parts of the UK as a cold front has sunk south during the last 24 hours. Meanwhile, hot air, very hot air is being bottled up across the Iberian Peninsula, causing issues for Spain and Portugal. And that is on its way later in the weekend and the start of next week. But for the time being, not only is it cooler in the northern half of the UK, it's also quite showery over the next few days. Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern England, seeing some heavy showers at times on Thursday and Friday, below average temperatures by day. And this little feature bringing some more persistent rain first thing Friday in the north. Further south, high pressure leads to a lot more dry and sunny weather during the next few days. And temperatures not as high as they were at the start of this week, but still mid to high 20s in places. Then it all changes. High pressure moves in firmly across the whole of the UK for Saturday, leading to widespread sunny skies. A lovely summer's day for many places. Sunshine up and down the country, except for the far north of Scotland, where it will be a bit cooler, cloudier, some rain early on. But for the vast majority, it's sunshine and above average temperatures. Low 20s in the north, mid 20s widely elsewhere, high 20s perhaps touching 30 Celsius in some of the hotter spots in the south. Then, with the strong sun summer sunshine at the moment and day-by-day -day heating building up, it turns even hotter on Sunday. Another widely sunny day across the UK. You'll notice some coasts are cooler, but fairly widely inland, I think, mid in the north, mid-20s in the north, to high-20s or even low-30s further south. By this stage, there's an amber extreme heat warning. That's valid from Sunday through to Tuesday. And you might be thinking, what, with 32 degrees? We had that earlier in the week. There are a couple of reasons why that starts on Sunday. First of all, there's some uncertainty on Sunday about how high the temperatures will get. They could be even higher than this. And I'll go into the reasons why in just a moment. But secondly, Sunday is the start of a prolonged spell, several days of high temperatures by day and very warm nights. Sunday night is going to be very warm. So it's that cumulative effect, Sunday to Tuesday, of high heat. And uh, that's it's just the start of it on Sunday uh, before things turn even hotter at the start of next week. And the reason things are turning even hotter at the start of next week is because high pressure over the UK pushes away to the east. That allows a southerly airflow. And this feature, this is the jet stream, but it's a vortex. That's what we call a vortex, this spinning circulation detached from the main jet stream. And that is likely to start to push the very hot air I mentioned earlier towards the UK. Now, there's actually very good agreement, considering we're a few days away, amongst all the computer models for the sequence of events expected to happen between Sunday and Tuesday. This vortex here will push very hot air across the UK, all areas seeing a rise in temperatures. But there are some details that have yet to be resolved. Most in, most notably, the extent of the heat across the UK and the timing of the very hottest air as it pushes north. And I'll show you some of that disagreement amongst the models here. Now, first I'm going to talk about the south of the UK, then I'm going to talk about the north. This is the temperature trend at 5,000 feet for the south of the UK. The reason I'm using 5,000 feet is because it's not affected by day-night differences, it's not affected by land-sea differences and all of that sort of thing. And so the trend can be seen much more clearly. This is essentially the character of the air, it's the heat of the air mass being shown and the date of the forecast is on the bottom there and you can see between Saturday and Tuesday this big trend, this increasing trend in the temperature at 5,000 feet. This isn't just from one computer model run. All of these dotted lines are from the 50 or so computer model runs of the European model. So clearly it's turning much hotter and that heat peaks Monday and Tuesday. But looking at the same computer model runs from the same model 36 hours ago, and just aligning the times of the forecast so that they match there, you can see that the heat 
36 hours ago was peaking Sunday, Monday. That's why there was an extreme heat warning issued for Sunday. And all that's happened, it's the same sequence of events, it's the same heat that's coming our way. All that's happened is that its onset is slightly delayed. That's the main difference, so that the peak is Monday, Tuesday. But there's still a significant increase on Sunday, still a very warm night on Sunday night. Now, I mentioned that I'll talk about the north, and it's a similar temperature trend for the north. This is from the most recent computer model runs of the European model. This rising trend, very similar to the south, not quite as high in terms of peak values, but remarkably high temperatures at 5,000 feet or into the 20s, which very rarely happens. So how does that look in terms of the surface temperatures? Well, widely across the UK, we're expecting above average temperatures and sunny skies for much of the time, Sunday to Tuesday, some areas of cloud floating about, but a lot of sunshine. And for Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern England, West Wales, I think mid to high 20s, perhaps the odd 30 or 31 Celsius in one or two spots. But it's within the amber extreme heat area where the most intense heat is expected, peaking on Monday and Tuesday. I think around coasts it will be cooler, but inland widely low 30s Celsius. And in some of the hotter spots at the moment signalled around South East England, East Anglia, parts of Eastern and Northern England up towards Yorkshire for example, there's the possibility of mid to high 30s Celsius. And of course that would approach the all-time UK temperature record which is 38.7 Celsius, 20% chance of breaking that record. But it's not necessarily just about the temperatures on the thermometer on Monday afternoon and on Tuesday afternoon. These heat warnings are issued not based on temperature thresholds but on the impact that this heat can cause. And it's worth bearing in mind that even if daytime temperatures don't exceed the record, we'll see very warm nights. And that can be more of a problem than high daytime temperatures when you have widely above 20 Celsius overnight. So I can already hear people saying, I can cope with this kind of heat. Why do we need an extreme heat warning? Well, the reason is this heat is looking widespread, not just in the usual hotspots of the southeast of England, widely across England, much of Wales, we can expect these unusually high temperatures. Not only that, but little relief at night. And of course, in the UK, houses are built to keep heat in a lot of the time. And so it is very difficult to get that relief at night. And that can cause health impacts, not just in vulnerable people, but certainly more pronounced in vulnerable people, babies and older people, underlying health issues and so on, but other impacts as well on transport and infrastructure. We're not just making these impacts up, they're based on the fact that we've seen similar impacts from previous hot spells in the UK. And so when we're seeing a repeat of this kind of heat wave in these kinds of areas, well, we can only uh, extrapolate that impacts are possible. That's why there's an extreme heat warning, to make sure people are aware of how unusual the heat is, how widespread it is, and how little relief there'll be at night, and so on. Just to go back to these graphs to show you the trend from the middle of the week, a notable decline in temperatures from the middle of the week. That's pretty clear. And that uh, decline in temperatures could be accompanied by a thundery breakdown. Some uncertainty on that, but I think the most likely scenario for the middle of the week is for this vortex to come close. That would lead to rising air and potential for thundery showers. Thundery showers aren't often the most useful source of rain. And of course, it's been very dry across many southern parts of the UK recently. And after any thundery showers clear away, actually the signal for later next week is for high pressure to build back in, albeit with much cooler air. And that would lead for much of the UK to drier and in many places sunnier weather returning with closer to average temperatures. Towards the north and northwest, always the chance of weather fronts bringing rain or showers and cloudier, cooler conditions. But that looks like the most likely weather pattern for later next week. Still some uncertainty about how that will evolve. So we'll keep you updated right here at the Met Office. But for the time being, it's all about that rising trend in temperatures for the start of next week. Make sure you follow all the necessary advice on how to stay cool in the heat and we'll keep you updated right here at the Met Office.